Today, let's knit some tube socks. While tube socks will never fit as neatly as fitted socks, these are pretty darn good. I'm going to show you how to make them in this video in the infant size. A pattern exists that will allow you to make them from this size up to XX large adult. That is available on Ravelry, and those of you who subscribe to Country Knitting of Maine News and Views will be seeing it in your magazine shortly. To make these, you need number one sock yarn. I prefer the kind with a little bit of stretch. It may say it has lycra in it or polyamide or elastane, depending on where in the world that you buy it. You don't have to have stretch, but I like it. Any standard gauge machine with two beds may be used, either a Japanese main bed and river combination or a European style true double bed machine. Either one works fine. Set your stitch size to get 12 stitches, 10 rows per inch. Of course, only six of those 12 stitches will show on the face of the fabric. Stitch size is likely to be towards the center of the dial, but do what works. Here's one that will fit me just off of the machine. And you can see it doesn't look a thing like a sock and doesn't look like it will fit. Do you stretch widthwise, and then it becomes clear how it could. I'm set up for every other rib, 16 needles on each bed, so the total needle span is 32. Left one is on the front, right one is on the rear. That is helpful for many machines, though not necessary for all. This one does work best that way. My left hand is going to be down under the bed, holding the yarn as I knit across in what we call a zigzag row. I'm set for both beds to knit normally. And you can see the yarn zigzags from one needle to the next across the bed. Now hang the river comb. While I do, I want to tell you about this zigzag row. It's a small row. You knit it tightly. If your machine has a zero setting, sometimes that is the correct stitch size. Usually it's zero, one, or two. This particular machine is quite unusual in my experience. I'm going to hang these on the comb. In that, three works best for me. All machines except passives. Weight is essential for good ribbing. Next step in the ribbon cast on. N is the normal stockinette setting on this machine, but we're going to push one side to R or whatever is your circular knitting setting on each carriage and make sure if you used the circular setting on the left side on the front, it's on the right side in the back, and vice versa. For this pattern, I'm also changing to the main ribbing stitch size, which is six. That is also unusual. For most machines, it would be a lower number. This bed knitted. This one did not. Now the opposite, opposite should occur. Sometimes you do have to pull the comb out of the way if it's a longer one than you need, such as mine is here. This bed knitted. Now the cast on is complete. For future reference, that is known as the tubular cast on. Now we shift everything back to stockinette settings. One little thing, almost all ribbing benefits from weights at the edges because the fabric tends to pull in towards the center and that leaves the edges a little bit looser than is desirable, so we add weights. They're unique to this machine. If you don't have them, but you do have passive heel grips, those are great. And the thing I actually use most often is the heavy forks from my Cool Tools and Cheap Tricks book. 
So we've got weights on and we're going to move them up frequently. Also setting the row counter to zero now. And in case you have a machine like this and don't understand the row counter, whoops, got to go around again. I do have a whole video on this type of row counter. There we go. Now we're at zero, zero. I'm going to knit 10 rows. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just to be safe, we're now going to move up the edge weights. This is a little bit overly conservative for most machines. This particular machine I find to be fussy about edge weights, so I'd rather be conservative and move them up frequently than drop stitches. And we're just going to keep doing what we did over and over until the correct row count is reached. All we are doing is knitting a long strip of ribbing. And move the weights up. For new knitters, here's a look down between the beds to see what's happening. If you hand knit, you will know that the ribbing that we're making is called Knit One, Purl One Ribbing. The knits are on this bed, and because the needles are facing the opposite direction, these will be pearls on the finished fabric. Looking down in, you can also see where my weights are pulling down and why that could be so effective. If these stitches don't keep pulling down, they rise up and they tend to drop off the needles, which is certainly not what we want. So for this size, I'm going to knit 80 rows. I'll keep on knitting 10 rows and moving my weights up and we'll get back together when I've done that. 80 rows are completed. Now I'm going to pull out a good long yarn tail and break it and drop it down between the beds. I've threaded a little bit of contrasting yarn and we're just going to use it as waste yarn, knit a few rows and then drop the work off of the machine. Ten rows is ample. All this is doing is holding on to our live stitches for us. Now if I break this yarn, obviously it won't supply the stitches. So if I put my hand underneath, removing these edge weights now, and I'm prepared to catch the work, I can just pretend to knit. I'll run out of yarn. And there I am, free. So at this point, here's what we have, and it looks like a very unlikely sock. I'm going to free the beginning by pulling the comb wire out. And the beginning is going to be the top of our sock. It's nice and flexible and should slide over the foot and up to the ankle, no problem. Here is the yarn tail we left at the end, and we left it nice and long for a reason. I'm going to thread it through a needle. And then here's a surprising fact. If we gather these stitches off, but do all the knits first and then all the pearls, another way of saying it is all the stitches on one side of the fabric first rather than going back and forth, the gathered toe is amazingly much neater. Make sure to only catch one strand from each stitch. Don't get confused. 
and now we'll repeat that going around the other side. Oops, my yarn is doubled. Let me pull the tail out. There we go. This is side number two. It is a little bit of a bother to look after all this extra yarn length, and I've been overly generous for this baby size, I know, but we'll be glad to have plenty of it because it's also going to be the seam up the leg, and in an adult size, it does take quite a bit. Now I'm removing the waist yarn. I could have, if I wanted to, knitted a couple rows of ravel cord and just pulled it out to separate. So here's what you have. And when we pull, it draws in, but with hardly any puckering. In fact, no puckering. So now we're going to use the remainder of the yarn tail to stitch the tube closed that makes the tube sock. Now I'm going to tell you that you may use any seam that you want, but what I have been doing on these, because the seams tend to be kind of long, is simply pinching the edges of the fabric together, as you see, and wherever the next stitch presents itself, popping up at the edge, I whip stitch through it. This is not a traditional grandma approved seam, but they've been looking good. And if doing an adult sock, you may be doing up to 24 inches of it. And it gets old to do a fancier seam and your eyes get tired. This one seems to work for me, but do what you think is proper to get a nice flat seam on the socks. At the top of the seam, before knotting it and weaving in the tails, Give it a little lengthwise stretch. If we make this without any flexibility, it could possibly break the yarn that's making the seam when somebody puts it on and stretches it up over the foot. So that seems to be stretchy enough. We also don't want it sloppy because then you lose good contact between the pieces of fabric. I really do not mine at the top. and then weave the yarn back in down the seam a little ways. Up, down, under, over, under stitches like that. Now that one can be snipped off. The initial yarn tail remains and will also have to be snipped. Your tubular cast on may ruffle as you're seeing. And here's how you get rid of that. It's very easy in this little bit. Stick the yarn needle into the tube. It's really going in right under the zigzag road we made. And pull lengthwise. And you can see it straightening out where this part's still roughly. It's pretty good. Um, beware of thinking that a neater cast on, such as a chain stitch cast on, would do a better job because it's not going to stretch enough to slide over the foot easily. Now the way I did it, we have them wrong side out. So now we turn them right side out and try them on. This doll is actually sized very much like a real human baby. And you can see it fits nicely. 